All right, as we look at a question that asks what intermolecular forces must be broken in order to boil or melt or free, well, it wouldn't be freeze, it would be melting, to go from a solid to liquid or a liquid to a gas, you have to overcome the intermolecular forces. And so what you're doing to answer that question is you are identifying what type of compound it is. In this case, it is argon. Argon is an element, all right? Um, of course, it gets more complicated than this. If you have a molecule, you need to decide if the molecule is ionic or covalent. Let the internet help you with that. Um, in Chem 2, especially in online Chem 2, you have lots of resources at your fingertips. Um, once you decide it, whether it's ionic or covalent, and you should be able to do that without the internet, the next thing is to decide if it's polar or nonpolar, if it's covalent. And you can let the internet help you with that. But be careful. Sometimes Google is wrong. You have to know enough chemistry based on your learning in Gen Chem 1 and so far in Gen Chem 2 as to whether or not Google is telling you the right thing. But do let Google help you with those sorts of things. You can Google compounds to find out more about them or remind yourself. But again, you got to know what you're looking at. You've got to be chem savvy to be able to see if Google's telling you the right thing. In this case, since it's just an element, it's definitely not ionic forces. It's not um, dipole forces because those occur if the molecule is polar, and it's not a molecule, it's an element. It's not hydrogen bonding because those occur in a polar molecule that has a hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Um, another option that we often see as a choice is covalent bonds, and that will never be true. You will never have to break covalent bonds in order to boil something or melt something because that's not the way it works. The actual covalent bonds don't get broken. It's the intermolecular forces that get broken. The only thing that is present in an elemental sample is dispersion forces. Dispersion forces are always present in a covalent compound. If you have an ionic compound, you don't worry about the dispersion forces because the ionic forces are so much stronger than that. So the correct answer to this would be dispersion forces.